Hello, today I'd like to talk about uh, using the pattern component feature in NX assembly modeling. Uh, so for this video, I'm going to be using NX12 and uh, we're going to get started on uh, making a little, a couple different component patterns here. Uh, so I've got a block here uh, that's just a base of this assembly and then this little red component is like a little fixture block that we are going to make a pattern of. So let's, we'll say that I want to make uh, more of them. Um, obviously with an assembly, you can add as many of this component as you want and then constrain each one of them. Um, but the problem with that is it's kind of tedious. And when you need to change the spacing, if it is truly a pattern, um, you might have to change the assembly constraints on all of them. And if you look at what I have here, on the constraints just to locate that one block that I have in this assembly so far, there were four constraints that I had to do. So multiply that by however many I want in my pattern, it can be very time consuming. So for what uh, we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up to uh, in assemblies tab at the top. We're gonna use pattern component in the component section. So I'm gonna hit the pattern component uh, the first thing it wants you to do is select the component that you want to pattern. So I'm going to select my fixture block. Uh, this works very similar to the patterning features in uh, the modeling package. So uh, this is going to look very similar if you've used those. So at the top, we've got the different types of pattern layouts that we can do. The first one is linear. That's what we're going to do on this uh, model. Uh, so we come down here and it's got a box for directions. So we're going to do direction one, and then we're going to hit this uh, specify vector. So that's going to be the direction that this pattern is going to go. So it's a linear, so I'm going to make a row. Uh, so I'm going to use something on the screen that I know the direction of it. So I pick that edge, and it's going to create a vector in that direction, and it starts my pattern. Uh, so for this one, I've got a count of three and the pitch spacing is going to be five. So you can see what that looks like on the screen here. The spacing from the center to center on each one of these is five inches. Uh, if I change that to four inches, you see they get closer together. And I can change the number of my pattern, obviously. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, the spacing is something that's very important. This dictates how... Uh, it measures between the different uh, components that you're creating. So count and pitch is the one that we have on the screen right now. It does the distance and how many you want. Count and span is a different measuring method. Um, it automatically changed the number to eight inches here. So what it's doing is it's doing three of my component and the span is eight inches. So between the first one and the last one, the distance is eight inches, and then it figures out where every one in the middle is going to be. Uh, so if I change it to have four, you can see the first one and the last one stay put, but it adds another one in between. Okay, so that's the difference between count and pitch and count and span. And then we have another one that is pitch and span. So pitch and span does the distance between each one and the total distance. So if I make the total distance 10 and make the pitch distance three, see the first one and the last one, the distance between them is 10 and the pitch distance between each one besides that is three. Okay, so there's three different ways that you can measure these. Uh, on a linear, usually count and pitch is probably the most common. We can also use another direction to make another row. So if we come down here and select direction two, we can add another vector. So if I come down here and pick this edge, now we're adding another direction. So we're still going horizontally here in the X direction. And now we have a row going vertically in the Y direction. Um, so that works exactly the same though. The, the spacing, you can do different spacing between the rows and the columns. Um, and once you create that instance or that uh, component pattern, uh, just hit OK on it. And now if you come up here and look, it says we have now eight of that part. And if we look up here above our constraints, we have a new 
spot that says component patterns and then there's a linear pattern selected there. So if I wanted to modify the pattern, I can just double click on it and I can change all those dimensions that I was using before. So I wanted to add another set there, hit OK, and it just updates my assembly. Okay, so this pattern is not connected to anything to do with the base model. Uh, it's all referenced off of the original component that I created and the spacing is all measured from that one. We have another assembly to look at here and this one we're gonna do a circular pattern and it's really not much different. Uh, so we'd go under pattern component again and this time we're gonna change it to circular pattern uh, we're going to select the component that we want to make a pattern of, select the vector. So in this case, I'm going to use the axis uh, on the center of this cylindrical shaped part. Once I do that, it automatically starts putting in my pattern based on the numbers that are down there. Um, you can specify a center point. If you select a, a vector using a feature or a datum axis, it automatically uses that as the center point. It doesn't mean you're stuck with it. Uh, you can select something else. If you use the center point from uh, this temporary uh, directional vector here, then it forces you to select a center point for your pattern. Okay, so depending on what you select, you may have to change where you, you, where you get your center point from. Um, the spacing is the same as what we showed on the linear pattern. So really there's nothing different there. Uh, and there's no second direction on a circular pattern. So if I wanted six of these at 360 degrees, I can type that in. If I only want them to go 180 degrees, uh, I can measure them just between 180. So it fits all six of them in between 180 degrees from the first one to the second one. Or I can go back to count and pitch and figure out the angle between them. If you want to use count and pitch to make a complete pattern all the way around, what you can do is take your uh, pitch angle and do 360 degrees divided by the number of uh, components you're trying to create here. Hit enter and it will space them out. It'll do the math there, 360 degrees divided by six and find the spacing between each one of them. Again, once you hit okay, you have a component pattern up here under your assembly uh, that you can edit and change that pattern. But once again, it's not connected to the original part. All it is doing is referencing the original components location and then using that information to make the pattern. Now there are times when you're gonna create a pattern that uh, doesn't fit into the linear or circular uh, categories. So I've got a part here that's got a very unique uh, shape to it and it's got a flange around it that's got some holes in it that I need this bolt that's going to tighten these two housings together. Uh, I need one in each hole. So you can do the normal option of going around and uh, adding a bolt for each hole and constraining it. But the problem becomes then once you go and modify this because there's always a chance that you need to change this pattern. You need to add more holes, remove holes, uh, change the spacing. So anything like that uh, is going to uh, cause problems for the location of your components that you've placed. Uh, so one way around that and to make it a lot easier and less time consuming to add the components is to use the pattern and component feature, uh, but it has an option to reference, it says here, it references the definition of an existing pattern from one of the components. Okay, so this is a pattern from your model, one of the models that you have in your assembly that's gonna locate those features. So before you get started, you have to really make sure that your model is capable uh, of having that pattern in it. So if we go look at this piece that I've got here on the bottom, I've got a pattern of holes here and how I created that was, uh, let's go back in time here on this part. So I've got a sketch that locates one of the holes. 
Um, and then I have offset the outside edge, uh, how far in I want those holes to be. Uh, so I've got a sketch here set up with some dimensions to control that. Uh, I then extruded that circle and put threads on that. So the cylinder that I've got there so that it had the threads in the holes. So then the next step is to use a pattern command to make that so that I have uh, that to reference in my assembly. So I'm going to go over here to pattern geometry and I'm going to select the threaded cylinder I've got here. I haven't subtracted that out yet. Uh, so I'm going to use the long option in this pattern geometry uh, dialog box. And when I do that, I want to make sure I got tangent curves selected or connected curves, whatever works best for the pattern and the path you have. But I'm going to come over here and select this set of curves from my sketch as the path. And as soon as you do that, it should create however many holes you're going to put in. So again, you're going to have to do your spacing that we've talked about and the count and the pitch or the span that you want to do. Um, but I've got 10 of those features spaced evenly around that path. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that because I've already got it done in the model. But let's go back and turn those all, all those features back on, go back to our assembly. Uh, so now when I get to my assembly and I want to make a pattern of that uh, bolt component, I'm going to do the same thing we were doing before, pattern component. Uh, but this time, I am going to use the reference pattern. Uh, steps are pretty much the same. Come out here and pick your feature. And then the next thing you're going to select is the pattern. So you're going to have to find that pattern in your assembly on the part that it belongs in. Um, when you do that, it selects all of the features uh, of that pattern. So you can see it's going to put a bolt at each one of those hole locations. Uh, before you can finish though, it says select base instance handle. So what you're going to do is come out here and pick what you want your base point to be. Uh, so that would be from your first component. Uh, so we select that and uh, that will create our pattern. So one thing about that pattern command, uh, when we do a reference pattern, is if I go to edit it, and let's say I didn't want to put all of them in, I want to skip a hole or leave one out or some a couple out. What you can do is come out here and pick on these handles at one of your components and right click on it and hit delete. And I can remove a couple. I could even remove all of them if I wanted to and hit okay. And now the pattern skips those when it gets to that feature on that pattern, the original reference pattern. If I want to bring them back, I can do the same thing. Just right click on that and hit undelete and bring those two bolts back. So now I have all my bolts back in. Okay, so if we did this correctly, what should happen if we go and edit the original pattern, let's say I want to make a change to the number of holes that I have in this, uh, the amount of bolts should automatically update and we really should have no issues with uh, changing the number of holes we have or even the spacing between them. So if I go to the bottom part and make it the work part and go to change that pattern, um, let's say I want 12 now. So that's going to be the location of the new features. You can see the it doesn't line up with where the bolts are right now. So if I hit OK, it updates everything. And uh, it's just going to tell me that my subtract has changed the number of bodies that it had. Uh, but if I go back and make the assembly the work part, you can see now I have 12 bolts instead of 10. And they're all lined up perfectly in the holes that they were supposed to be in. So it added two more components, moved all the rest of them, and everything updated nicely. So I should be able to do pretty much anything I want to that pattern. Uh, so anytime you're going to do uh, components where there's features that they have to be related to from one of your other components, uh, this is probably the best way to do it if you don't want to spend a lot of time monkeying around with uh, adding and removing components and constraining uh, components. 
Uh, this is really the best way to go if you can put those features in your original part as a pattern. Um, so hopefully this has helped you guys understand uh, the pattern component feature in NX assembly modeling. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to take care of that for you. Thank you.